Welcome to the Line Grinder Configuration Settings video. We start with the previous video left off, with the drill file left open. We have just finished saving the last of the G-code files, and that was pretty easy really. We are now turning our attention to the configuration settings that make all the magic possible. If you have not seen the previous video entitled Creating G-code with Line Grinder, you really should watch it now. The settings are configured on the Settings tab. As you may imagine, there are a large number of possible settings, and each type of action, isolation routing, drilling, edge milling, etc., will have different options. Furthermore, even for a single action type, there can be multiple configurations. Top copper isolation G-code has different settings than bottom copper isolation G-code. So, how can one present all of these settings in a way which is reasonably intuitive? For sure, having a vast array of little edit boxes on the screen, some of which are used at any one action and some of which are not needed at that time, is going to be pretty confusing. The mechanism Line Grinder uses is to encapsulate a set of configuration objects into a container. This container object is then used to apply them when a specific type of Gerber or Exelon file is loaded. Because it is the file suffix that triggers which settings to use, these configuration objects are called file managers we can see the file managers here. So, if we open a file with a suffix of .drl, we get these options applied. If we open a file with a suffix of -b underscore cu dot gbr, we will get a different set of options. Note that because this particular file manager is for isolation routing, we see only options related to isolation routing. There are no options here related to drilling or any of the other operation types. In other words, the contents of a file manager are related to the type of operation the file manager is expected to perform. As you can see, there are file managers for top copper and edge milling as well. Opening a file with the matching suffix will apply these options. Having said all this, it is important to realize that no settings can be changed in Line Grinder while a Gerber or Exelon file is open. Line Grinder has no ability to adjust things dynamically if the settings are changed. All settings are read only if a file is open. This is easy to fix. We just close the file and then the settings are available for modification. Now the settings can be adjusted. Since the bottom copper file manager is selected on the left, the settings on the right are for that file manager. As an example, we can disable the output of the reference pin G-code by dropping the mouse in the appropriate area and make the change we wish. If we aren't sure what a setting does, we can select it with the mouse and the help text at the bottom of the panel will change. If we click on the reference pin Z drill depth option, we see it is currently set to minus 0.3. The text at the bottom tells us more. If we cannot read all of the text, we can adjust the size by dragging the splitter bar upwards. Here we can see that this setting is used to tell Line Grinder how deep to sink the bit when drilling out reference pin holes, a useful thing to be able to set. I am not going to cover all the options. The help text is mostly self-explanatory. However, I will discuss one or two of the major configuration options towards the end of this video. So let's talk for a moment about what you are going to see the first time you start Line Grinder. Let's also discuss how to set up the file managers for your Gerber file. So, let's go back to the beginning. Here is Line Grinder started for the first time. You will be presented with the software opened up to the Plot View panel. You should immediately go to the Settings panel. Here you can see that we have no file managers. Why would there be? The file managers are tied to the quite specific suffixes used by the EDA software, and everybody uses different software. The first thing we set is the application default units. These are the units you wish the file managers to use when you specify settings. You can use metric or imperial, whichever is more intuitive and comfortable for you. It does not matter which you choose. If your Gerber file is in the other set of units, the file manager settings will automatically be converted appropriately before use. You will also see there is a setting called ISO plot points per inch or millimeter. This value is related to how fine the isolation routing conversion is. The higher you set this, the longer it will take to convert, but the better the accuracy of the resulting isolation routed traces. At some future time, a video about the internals of the isolation routing process will be produced. 
This video will explain in detail how this setting works. For now, just realize that the default values are pretty good. You may wish to lower this value if you have a big circuit board and you're getting memory problems. The G-Code Output Unit section determines the units used in your output G-Code. Once you have set this correctly, press the Save Configuration button at the bottom so that Line Grinder will remember the settings. Now we need to create some file managers. If you are using KiCad, Eagle, or DesignSpark, you can just press one of these buttons to get a suitable set of file managers created for you. I am using KiCad, so I will just press this button here. If you don't see your EDA software listed here, feel free to send me over a set of Gerber and Exelon files for a sample project and I will see about adding a button for that software here. The file managers are added and we get a helpful little dialog box telling us this. As it says, we should really check the settings. Most people will find the default values to be reasonably usable. The defaults are essentially the values that I personally use. Hey, I wrote the software, so why would I make things difficult for myself? You should go through the settings one by one, examining what they do and checking that the value seems reasonable for your machine. All the automatic creation buttons are doing is essentially just creating a sequence of default file managers designed to trigger on the Gerber file output suffixes of the specified EDA software. You can easily create your own file managers. For example, if your EDA software puts out a top copper layer with a name like dash top underscore copper dot GBR, we can manually create a file manager for this. We just click on the new file manager button. A dialog box will pop up asking us what kind of file manager we want. Since it's a top copper layer, we will want to have an isolation routing type file manager. We click on the isolation cut button. We see that we immediately get a new file manager with the name of edit this value in the property panel. Remember, file managers trigger on the file name suffix, so we really need to fill in this field to tell LineGrinder when the configuration should be activated. In this case, it is when a file with a suffix of dash top underscore copper dot GBR is open. When we change the suffix name in the file name pattern field and hit return, we see the suffix appears as appropriate in the left hand panel. Now the file manager can be edited and adjusted just as you would for any other file manager. Using this technique, you can create as many custom edge cut, drilling, and isolation file managers as you wish for any EDA software. When you open a Gerber or Exelon file, the first file manager line grinder comes to that matches the file name pattern will supply the settings used to create the G code files. The options in the file managers are pretty much self-explanatory, except for one. The ISO cut width option on file managers dedicated to isolation routing needs a bit of explanation. Here is a file manager for the copper layer isolation routing. The operation mode is isolation cut. This means it has sections devoted to settings relevant to isolation cutting. You will not see sections relevant to drilling or edge milling. Those are different file manager types. Here we see the ISO cut width option. What this parameter details is the width of the line your engraving bit will cut. It is very important because it tells Line Grinder the minimum separation distance into which it can fit the engraving bit. In other words, if a pad and a trace are closer than the ISO cut width, then Line Grinder will not be able to create an isolation routed path between them. If an isolation routed path is not created, the bit will not cut out the copper and the two objects will be electrically connected, even though they should not be. In cases where the bit simply cannot fit between two objects and line grinder just isolates around them, there is no warning given. Let's demonstrate this with a simple example of two resistors with a trace running between them. Note for this top copper isolation routing file manager, our current ISO width is set to 0 0.01 inches. We will open up the file. Because it has an extension of -f.cu.gbr, we will apply that file manager. And here we see the plot view. Let's do the conversion. File manager was settings were automatically applied and the conversion has now happened. 
We'll turn off some of these options, which just confuse things. And overlay the Gerber plot. We can see that the ISO cut width is small enough that the routing bit can get between the two pads. Let's increase the ISO cut width parameter a bit higher and see what happens. We have to close the Gerber file. Settings cannot be adjusted while the Gerber file is open. Let's set it to a value of 0 0.02 and see what happens. Again, we convert to G-code and we can enlarge the plot display. Ah, now that's interesting. We can see that the width of the isolation cut is larger now and is clipping the other isolation cuts around the pads. This is not a problem. The two pads in the trace are still electrically isolated from one another. Let's try increasing the ISO cut width parameter a bit higher and see what happens. Again, as before, we have to close the Gerber file. Let's set it to a value of 0 0.03 inch. and reopen the Gerber file and retry the conversion. The width of the isolation cut is now much larger and the bit could not fit between the trace and the pad without cutting into either. The line grinder isolation cut algorithm cannot chop into a pad or trace, so it just isolates around the group. We can see that the trace and the two pads are electrically connected now. This is not at all what we want. This is potentially a very bad thing for the circuit. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is very important to use an ISO cut width that will allow your graving bit to go wherever it needs on the board. Of course you have to be careful about your design. You cannot do everything on an isolation routed board that you would be able to do on a commercially prepared board. In the above example, you would probably be able to run two thinner traces between the pads on a commercially prepared etched board. In most cases, isolation routing just cannot cope with that fine granularity. So you will have to optimize your PCB layout for isolation routing. There will be a subsequent video discussing this topic in more detail. So let's talk a bit more about the ISO cut width parameter. This parameter does not control the width of the line. It is what the width of the line is given the depth to which you sync the bit and the angle of the bit you choose. In other words, it is the value your CNC settings cause to happen. Setting the ISO cut width value only affects where the engraving bit can go in line grinder. A change to the ISO cut width parameter does not actually make any changes to the real world width of the cut. The depth of the cut is what the depth of the cut is. So, what does determine the real world width of the cut? Well, since you're using a conical engraving bit, the actual real width of the cut is determined by the angle of the bit and the depth to which you sink that bit. Let's cut away to a simple demo in MS Paint. Yes, I am aware that Paint is probably not the most sophisticated graphics design tool, but hey, it will do to demonstrate the concepts. What we see here is a side view of a piece of FR4 PCB board with an engraving bit above it. The FR4 PCB is this area here. We can see the thin copper layer at the top and the thicker fiberglass layer at the bottom. We also see an engraving bit in gray hovering over the top of the board. The bit has a certain angle. In this case, it looks like a 45 degree bit. We sync the bit into the PCB board to begin isolation routing. As you can see, we are isolating the left and right sides. The actual width of the cut is this distance here at the top of the copper layer. If we sync the bit deeper, we get a wider isolation cut because the bit is conical. The angle of the bit makes a difference as well. If we use a 90 degree bit, we see that for the same depth of cut, we get a much wider isolation cut width. So, the actual real world isolation cut width you get depends entirely on the angle of the bit you choose and the depth to which you choose to sync it. Line Grinder does not have a parameter for the angle of the V bit. 
It does not, and cannot, use the ISO cut width parameter to figure out how deep to sink the bit. You do this. You choose the angle of the bit. You set the ISO cut Z level parameter, which is the depth to sink the bit, and the combination of the depth of cut and the angle of bit will give you a certain isolation cut on the PCB board. You need to tune the ISO cut Z level setting to achieve a real world isolation cut width equivalent to the ISO cut width specified. Simply changing the ISO cut width setting will change how and where Line Grinder can run its isolation routed tracks. In other words, it changes the G code but it will have no effect on the real widths of the isolation cuts. Only the angle of the V-bit and the depth to which you sink it can do that. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of our overview on how to configure the line grinder software. Be sure to check all of the settings in each file manager in order to make sure they are suitable for your machine. This is really important. I'd like to note that there will eventually be another video in this series entitled Isolation Routing Tips. This video will provide information on the changes you can make to your board design and layout in order to produce better isolation routed circuit boards. When it becomes available, a link will be provided in the description below. Hopefully, Line Grinder will be useful to you in producing your own isolation routed circuit boards.